Hello my beautiful gorgeous angels. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Rachel and welcome to my March TBR. So I have not done like a proper sit down TBR video in a minute but I did transition over to doing like reset vlogs and I talk about my monthly TBRs in those videos but I am not going to have time to film an entire reset vlog for the month of March. I'm going to be out of town for the last week of February, but I still did really want to talk about my TBR with you guys. So I was like, you know what? Why don't we just do a little throwback and do a classic sit down TBR video? I am so excited about the TBR that I have set for the month of March. I feel very motivated. I feel very excited. I feel a little bit delusional. All good things going into a new month of reading. I am also just so excited for the month of March because this is when I start feeling happy again, because in the month of March, we are going to be entering spring, which I am so excited for. Spring is my second favorite season. I cannot wait for warmer weather and most importantly I cannot wait for us to spring forward and for it to be lighter later. Daylight savings may not be a big deal to some of you but it is everything to me. Like I cannot tell you how much my mental health hinges on the fact that it is going to be light until like seven o'clock by the end of March. That is everything to me. So I'm really excited. I'm feeling really happy and just excited for a new season to start and to read some amazing books. Hopefully I have a lot of hope, a lot of four and five star predictions here. So let's just get straight into those. All right. So the first book on my March TBR is A Fate Inked in Blood by Danielle L. Jensen. I do not currently own this book as it is not quite out, but I did pre-order it and this cover is absolutely stunning. I also think my pre-ordered edition does have blue sprayed edges. So I'm very excited about that. This is the start of a new series by this author, and this is a Norse mythology inspired fantasy romance. That is pretty much all I know, but I am very, very excited for this. I have found a renewed love for Danielle L. Jensen's writing, so I'm very excited to see a brand new book by her. The next book on my March TBR is Lady of Shadows by Melissa K. Rorick. So I have read the first book in the Lady of Darkness series called Lady of Darkness. I've actually read it twice. Last year, I read it around April, I want to say, and it was fine. It was like a three star moment, but I did not want to continue on with the series after reading the first one, but for whatever reason, this book just stayed on my mind and I kept seeing so much praise for the series as a whole. So I just decided I am going to reread the first book and just give it another shot. And I'm really glad I did. I enjoyed it much more on a reread. Not a perfect book still, but I do see the potential in this series a lot more now than I did back in April. So the second book is Lady of Shadows and I'm really excited to get more into the story. I have heard from fans of this series that once you get past book two, things get really, really good. So I am gonna kind of like temper my expectations for the second book, but I do hope Hope that I enjoy it a little bit more than the first one. And I don't know, I just feel committed to finishing this series. So I want to give it an honest shot. So I'm excited to do that with Lady of Shadows in March. The next book that I'm going to be reading in the month of March is The Ever Queen by L.J. Andrews. I read the first book, The Ever King, in the month of January, and it was so good. It was a really strong four-star book for me. I absolutely loved it. It is Pirates of the Caribbean plus fey fantasy romance. That is all I need in this life of sin. And this is the highly anticipated sequel. So the second book continues Eric and Livia's story. And and there are going to be more books in the series, but this does conclude their romance. I have a feeling the series might be like interconnected duologies, kind of like the Crowns of Nyaxia series, because I have seen who the third book is going to be about and it does not focus on Eric and Livia anymore. So we will be concluding their romance and I am so excited. Eric Bloodsong, I believe it's his last name. Cannot believe I am forgetting one of my book boyfriend's last names. I love that man. I really do. He dresses like a pirate. He is so morally gray. He is just everything. He is so, so soft for Livia and brutal to absolutely everyone else. I had so much fun reading The Ever King. It is such a good time and I cannot wait to see how things conclude in The Ever Queen. All right, speaking of Danielle L. Jensen earlier, I also in the month of March want to read The Inadequate Air by Danielle L. Jensen. Besties, I'm doing it. I cannot tell you the amount of people who have told me to read this book to get to this book. That is why I picked up The Traitor Queen by Danielle L. Jensen, which is the second book in the series. And now I am on to the third. I am very, very excited. My expectations are very high. I really did love The Traitor Queen. So I feel like this book is going to be really fantastic as well. So this is a part of the Bridge Kingdom series, but once again, this is also kind of like interconnected duologies where we are focusing on different couples every two books. So in this book, we are focusing on two new characters that we did meet in the first two books, but the plot is still kind of continuing. Things did wrap up at the end of The Traitor Queen, but there were still like a few things open. And now we are going to have two different main characters at the wheel that we are focusing on, seeing their romance blossom and continue on with that plot. I am very much looking forward to this. I really, really did enjoy these characters, particularly Karis. He was very fun in The Traitor Queen, so I'm excited to get to know him a little bit better and focus on his and Zara's romance. The next book that I want to read in the month of March is Vows and Ruins by Helen Shorer. So this is the second book in the Legends of Thesmar series. This book follows our main character, Thea. Thea is this badass warrior. She is training under the guidance of a legendary war sword named Wilder Hawthorne. And in the first book, we have a bit of like an enemies to lovers to question mark scenario between them. So I am definitely looking 
looking forward to continuing on with the series. I gave Blood and Steel, the first book, a three star upon finishing it, but then like a month later, I bumped it up to a three and a half star because I just kept thinking about that couple. So I am very excited to see what I think about the second book. I really do want to absolutely fall in love with this series. Once again, it's one where I can see the potential for me to love it. I thought that the first book was fun, it was good, but I just wasn't like blown away. I am hoping to be blown away by the second book. And this author does have a very bingeable writing style, so I am hoping to just have a really good time with Vows and Ruins and hopefully have some more delicious tension between Wilder and Thea. The next book is going to be a carryover from my February TBR. February is not over at the time that I am filming this, but I am 100% positive I am not going to get to this book by the time the month ends, and that is North Queen by Nicola Teich. I'm really, really excited about this book, so that's why I am also putting it on my March TBR. This is going to be one of my top priorities for March. I feel like this will be one of the first books that I vlog in the month of March. It's a fantasy romance. We have Faded Mates. I really love the vibes. I've seen some wonderful reels giving like the aesthetic of this book, and those get me every time, so I am super looking forward to this. I hope that I have a new favorite with The North Queen. The next book on my March TBR is The Road of Bones by Demi Winters. So this is a Viking fantasy romance. I don't know if I've actually read a Viking fantasy romance, so I'm very excited. I picked this book up because my friend Cammie at Burrows and Books loves this book so much, and upon finishing it for the first time, she just immediately restarted it and read it again. So she read this book back to back because she enjoyed it that much. What a selling point. I am so excited for this. I've also seen a lot of other people reading this and really enjoying it, and I know the second book just came out. So I hope that I have as great of an experience with this book as Cammie did, and I'm excited for some Viking fan row. The next book that I want to read in March is The Frost Queen's Blade by Meg Smitherman. So this is very exciting because this is a standalone fantasy romance, which we absolutely never see. And I am a series girl through and through, but a standalone is nice. I'm so excited to see how the story plays out in just one book. It does say the Ice Blood duet. If I had to guess, the second book might be following different characters, but I do think we're only going to follow one romance and see that romance complete in this book. The tagline for this book is a reluctant queen, a deadly assassin, and a deal bound in blood. Sounds like a great time. I'm there. I'm very excited. All right, and then the book that I am probably the most excited to read in the month of March is Heat of the Everflame by Penn Cole. This is the third book in the Kindred's Curse saga. Friendly reminder, you guys need to read The Kindred's Curse Saga, Spark of the Everflame, Glow of the Everflame, and then Heat of the Everflame are the books that are out. The final book, Burn of the Everflame, is coming out in June. You guys need to read this series. It is so good. It is so much fun. It just does everything that I love in fantasy romance, and this slow burn tension that we have between our characters is incredible. I absolutely love this series. Spoiler for my wrap-up, I gave Glow of the Everflame, the book that comes before this, five stars. It was absolutely incredible. And I have very high hopes for this book as well, especially things that happened in book two and things that I think are gonna happen in this book. I'm ready, I'm sat, I am so, so excited. So at the beginning of this series follows our main character, DM. DM is a healer living in a human world surrounded by a bunch of magical realms. The human people are treated very poorly by the magical people around them. And after DM's mother goes missing, DM gets involved in a rebellion against these magical monarchies and kind of gets involved in just a lot more than she bargained for. She starts to interact with some of the monarchy and discovers a lot about herself along the way. It is so good. The plot is really fun. Our main character, DM, has such a sarcastic sense of humor. I absolutely love her. And I just can't say enough about the romance. It is so good. It is slow burn. Okay, be ready for a very, very, very very slow burn romance, but I promise it is done so well and you are going to absolutely fall in love with these characters. It's a very character driven story, which is my absolute favorite. So needless to say, I cannot wait for this. It is quite long, but once again, the font is pretty big, so I don't think it'll take me too long to get through this. Plus I am so excited and need to know what happens. So I cannot wait to read Heat of the Everflame in March. Okay, and then the next book on my March TBR has been a long time coming. This should have been on several TBRs prior to this, but I am finally going to continue with the Blood Grey series and pick up the second book, Blood Solace. The first book is Blood Mercy. It was so fantastic. I gave it four stars, but it's a very strong four star. I think this is such a unique fantasy romance because it is written like this high epic fantasy. It does have a dense writing style and it is a little bit slow in the beginning, but I still thoroughly enjoyed myself. This is a vampire fantasy romance and our love interest is the most cinnamon roll hero you have ever read about. And he and Cassio's romance is truly beautiful. I am really excited to continue on with this series. It's pretty long. And because the writing is so dense, I really do not want to wait too long between books to to continue on with the series because I really want to be fresh on everything. So I'm really, really excited to pick up this book. The first book ended in quite the cliffhanger. I am very nervous, but excited to continue on with this and follow more of Leo and Cassia's story. All right, and then the final book on my March TBR. I don't know if I'm gonna get to it, but 
I didn't get to it in February and I would like to get to it in March. Like we would love to do this. So I'm gonna put it on my TBR to put it out there into the world. I need to finish my reread of the Throne of Glass series with Kingdom of Ash. This is the last book in the series and this is the final book that I need to finish before I am done with this third read of the Throne of Glass series. My absolute favorite series of all time. It is perfection. And Kingdom of Ash is one of the strongest books in the series for me. It is definitely in the upper half. I love this book so much. It is so painful and beautiful and such an epic finale. Sarah J Maas killed it with this book. So we may or may not get to this book in March, but I just wanted to put it on my TBR because I wanna read it. So I'm putting it in the video. All right, my loves. So that is it. That is my March TBR. As you will notice, I did not have any new releases on my TBR for the month of March. Is anything like very exciting coming out in the month of March? For some reason, I didn't have anything, but if there are any fantasy or fantasy romance kind of adjacent books coming out in March that you think I should read, absolutely let me know. I would also love to know what is the top book on your March TBR? What is the book that you absolutely wanna to get to in this next month? And if you made it to this point in the video and you wanted to let me me know, go ahead and leave the unicorn emoji. Please make sure that you're following me on Instagram and Goodreads. They are always linked down below. I really appreciate that you watched this video. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. I love you all so, so much, and I will catch you guys in the next one.